And here is a father who wants fruit, he wants more fruit, and then he wants much fruit. Almost seems like God is ambitious. Almost seems like God is needy or perhaps greedy. Maybe God has a competition with a God of some other planet we don't know of who can have more people. Maybe God has been lacking attendance in the worship in heaven and he needs to recruit new worshipers because his self-esteem goes down. I mean, what is the reason God wants so many people to be saved? Is it because God has some certain sheets and it makes him feel better when he has a lot of people following him? Why does God expect me to make it my priority to bring many people to Jesus and when I do it, he says, let's prune some things in your life so you can bring more people to Jesus. When I do that, he says, let's abide more in me so you can bring much people to Jesus. And when I do that, he says, let's raise up other disciples so that your fruit can remain even when you die so they can do what you started to do. Why is God so obsessed with the fruit from us? Is that his ambition? Is that his need? Is that his greed? What is his motive? Why does he want me to bring people to church? Why does he want me to bring people to Jesus? If you don't discover God's motive, you will always struggle with the motivation to do that. God's vision is mega. God does not want us to have little fruit. God does not want one person getting saved. God says, I want more, I want much, and I want fruit that remains. God's vision is mega. Most of us, we limit our vision to mini vision. We like mini vision. If I bring one person a month to Jesus and we feel so proud. And God in here goes in and says, I have a mega vision. And many times we come to the Lord with a small spoon and God has this fire hydrant hose ready to pour out the blessings on us. And we come and say, Lord, Lord, you don't have to get all busy and worked up right here. I just got a spoon. Because I just want to fill the spoon, Lord. I just want to have that one family member. You know, sometimes I wouldn't mind, I think, if he doesn't go to heaven with me, how annoying he is. But I really think that he should go to heaven. So that fill me with one spoon, Lord, and we should be fine. And God looks at you and says, it's not about the smallness of your vision. It's about the bigness of my vision. God comes to Moses and says, Moses, I'm sending you to the nation to deliver a nation. And Moses says, God. I'm delivered. Aren't you happy? I can't speak God. I stutter even when I talk to you and plus my reputation in Egypt. Let's not go there. It didn't finish really well. When I left her, I didn't leave on a good note. I don't have any good connections. And by the way, your people, they don't want to be free. They're not going to accept me God. And God comes to a man who has a mini vision and God has a mega vision. What is the source? of God's mega vision. It's his mega love. God has no needs that you and I can supply. Yes, when people get saved we bring glory to God but in reality the Bible says God is self-sufficient. That means his self-esteem doesn't get based on nothing outside of him. He is his own self-esteem. He does not depend on how many friends like him, how many people don't like him. He is God all by himself and he was before your tiny little peanut brain came to this earth. He's God all by himself and he created galaxies, billion of galaxies and you and I are in a small little dust part of one galaxy that are billion of them and all of that he calls just under his feet. It doesn't even get to his hands. He's God all by himself. He has no needs that you and I can fulfill. Why does he have this mega vision to see many and many people saved? Not because he's ambitious or because he's greedy, but because he has a mega love that screams for that mega vision. And if we be very honest, the reason why our vision is mini, it's not because we are small, it's because our love is weak. Many times because our love is consistent with the size of our vision.